What's going on guys? This is Empty Box. And oh boy, we go multi-groove racing here today. Driving out racing any car fixed from Auto Club Speedway. Multi-groove because this track is actually multi-groove now. Get ready. And Going it's green. better than it's ever been in iRacing. Legitimately going to be running way up at the top here today. Now early on, fresh tires, bottom line is still the way to go. Green, green, green. You know, this is still an IndyCar after all. And when you can go around the track flat out you know, with great ease on fresh tires, especially if you have Stay clean hard. air, it's going to be the way to go. Move back in the pack, there, slipstream. Oh boy, makes that high line super powerful. Now this is actually race number three for me on the week. Race number one ended on lap five. When there was a wreck at the top of the track, I was down at the bottom. And then some guy just kind of came out of nowhere on my screen just because I'm running a single screen and essentially stopped right in front of me. But that's neither here nor there. And then race two, I was in the lead. Caution came out, made a pit stop with about 10 to go. And I think it would have been interesting, but on the yellow flag, as this was going on, uh, I lost connection. But 10 laps to go. Yeah, yeah. It was a thing. Car outside. Still there. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. It's actually really fun because it is legitimately multi-groove racing. Like this is a first. Even when you know things were at their best here in iRacing racing in this regard in multi-groove sense. The Indy car here at Auto Club Speedway raced nothing like the way the Indy cars race at Auto Club Speedway. And I would actually be quite interested in doing a race with the uh, DW12, the original DW12, and seeing how that plays out. Because I imagine with that thing, which you know punches a bigger hole in the air, you get a bigger slipstream. It seems to be a little bit less sensitive to aero push, just in general. Inside. I imagine you could do some absolute bonkers racing here. Clear inside. Although I will say one thing I don't like, there's just not enough tire fall off. Which makes the leader pretty much unpassable if they just sit down there on the white line. The previous two races I did, <laughs> both won the exact same way. Uh, no one able to pass the leader. Which is kind of a shame. Outside. You essentially have to be the third car in the line. Because when you're the second car in the line, you can't get the same run that you can. And if you don't have the run, you can't make the... Make, make the slipstream work out. So it's kind of one of those things where you have to be far enough back, but realistically, in this environment, it's very hard to get far enough back. Just because this is a fixed setup race, everyone's running the same setup. Everyone's got the same downforce level, same wing configurations. You can only press the pedal so hard and only go so quick. These guys are going to run the top right in front of us. We're going to kind of experiment, maybe run a different line from them. But we're just not following in their tire tracks, burning the tires off. I do think the high line is the way to go. But the good news is the other lines are at least viable. Car outside. Clear high. Too big of a lift there. Yeah, I probably outside. should have been more aggressive getting back up in line. Still there. 
clear. Outside. Clear. make pretty much anything work Still there. if the situation is Clear in play. Outside. Outside. Big Clear left. High. Big left. Oh, I'm definitely the preferred line, though. Sound like a bump draft? Inside. Yeah, no, no. Clear inside. Car outside. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. Still there. Hold your line. Still there. Hold your line. Clear high. This is some good stuff, you know? Car outside. Still there, hold your line. Up on the low line. That line is definitely, definitely in, in the uh, favor. Stay low. Keep low. Stay low. Yeah, we need a good corner here. We also could use some sled stream. <laughs> Keep low. Oh no, oh no. The front end was about to take off on us there. Stay low, there is a car on the high side. You're on the bottom, three wide. The next car is the leader. Still there. Ah! Car outside, Sorry. two wide. Clear up top. That's on me. Yellow flag. Line up, single file. I didn't realize we were going three wide there. Yeah, we were uh, three wide there, Matt. I had to hold the middle there. Yeah, I didn't realize it until I was already losing the front of the car. Yeah, I'm, I, I survived it. I That's, don't know if I got any damage, uh, Walter, but I survived it. That was 100% on me there. I will 100% take the blame on that one. Who's going to? I, I just, like I said, I just didn't realize we were three wide until at that point where Ari was in the front of the car and it's one of those things where Pasta. if you lift out of it, the car doesn't actually turn more because you're driving off the right rear tire essentially. So you're just kind of, you get to a point and you're just committed to whatever yeah, line the, the car ends up. Who's going through, guys? So we'll see here. I don't know. We might we might end up just making a pit stop just for shenanigans, anyways. If these guys stay out. Come on down, get fresh tires. Not that it really is going to make too huge of a difference, but you know, more cars to pass. As apparently everybody but the leader stays out <laughs> or comes in. I feel like it's such a bonehead. I think that only got one guy though. I mean, if you're gonna cause a wreck, uh, take out as few cars as possible, right? All right, there's our dudes. Ah! Not move it, move it. Just not been my week. <laughs> it's just not been my week at all. Line up, single file. Anyways, on to the green flag. Alrighty, we're going back to the green, green flag stay racing. Stay focused. Still, uh, 44? 34 laps to go. Off. 44. Math is hard when you're trying to flag, trying to do a summer flag. race. Alright, I'm just going to say that. Math was one of my better subjects in school. Granted, I put like zero effort in at school because just 
you know, some people don't thrive in that environment. But, uh, yeah, it's one of those things. Like, if you watch the, the Indy fix races I've done, because it often comes down to fuel calculations, like, it's, it's a thing, you know? Well, we've just uh, run away from everybody. The field just got very super spread out here. The next car is the leader. A swap going on there. Let's just max out the weight jacker. Give me all of the left turn. The car outside. Keep low. Still there. Outside, clear. Car outside. Clean air. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. Keep low. Woo, we want to laugh. Okay, you are the leader. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. Clear. The yellow flag is out. Line up, single file. Pit road is closed right now. Catch the... Probably Eleven. something happened car. back there. Catch the pace car. All right, 40 laps to go. That's 80 miles of racing, fuel tank, 18 gallons and change, 4 miles a gallon, 72 miles of range. Huh. Huh. You know what? We might end up... I'm probably going to actually go ahead and ride around here under yellow and then make a pit stop the uh, last time by. Let us nine. Car by. Uh, Australia man, the, the, the nine car has like three wheels. <laughs> Should we really be letting him by? <laughs> Should we really be letting him by? <laughs> yeah, guys, spitting down bottom here, guys. Everybody's gone. Alrighty. Anyways, onto the green flag. I'll explain what happened later. Alrighty, so we made a pit stop. Several other drivers also made a pit stop. I did some calculations on my phone, and we need to be about 4.1 miles per gallon to make it to the end from here, which should be doable. Oh, then again, that's assuming a two-mile track length, and uh, we're likely to be doing significantly longer than two-mile laps. At least back here in the pack, in the traffic. Going to be lifting out throttle, saving fuel anyways. Inside. Still there. Car outside. Still there, hold your line. Still there. Still there. Clear high. Alrighty. So just kind of periodically check the miles per gallon steering wheel there Shoot bottom corner outside. kind of hard to see for you guys but still there hold your line you're in the top 10 outside clear car outside sorry Chris that was that was too close for me there's a car on the high side get the hell out of still there that's so hard to make the low line still work there. Outside is clear. Try to scoot up here. There we go. Inside. 
Still there, inside. Clear. Take this momentary section here to go ahead and look out, save a little fuel. Car inside. Still there. Clear inside. Inside. Thank you for getting out of my Still way. How nice of you. Clear. It's definitely not required, but definitely greatly appreciated. See, I just don't see any way that they're going to be able to make it on fuel from here if this goes green to the end. And, you know, you hate to give up all of the track position, but it's not like passing is incredibly challenging here. Yes, it is very difficult to make the bottom work. But I just feel like playing the uh, strategy game there gives us a card back. You know, it gives us something versus the other drivers in the field, perhaps. Because, I mean, these guys have two fewer gallons of fuel. Yeah, four miles a gallon, that's eight, eight miles of fuel. Eight miles of fuel is a lot when you need to make it on a track that's almost flat out, you know? The other thing is, I don't know who is on the same strategy, because other drivers are on the same strategy. Inside. I'm pretty sure we're the first car that made a pit stop, but I don't know if this guy behind me, if he's on the same strategy, or if he's just a car that was in front of us after we made our stop and we passed him. The only guy that I know for sure is the guy that had the uh, Samsung car with the bright neon fluorescent yellow green wheels. So, oh, at least one guy who made a pit stop. Inside. Clear. That low line is so terrible now. Come on! Why, why you change your line? Although that said, these guys back here, 4.33. No! 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 Anyways, onto the green flag. All righty, we're going back to green flag racing. This guy in front of me obviously stayed out, the guy behind me stayed out, and then from there on, uh, everybody made pit stop, so... Green, green, green. Fuel should You're be pretty much a non-issue at this point. Nice and smooth. Which kind of sucks, because if it was going to be a fuel mileage race, we were right where we wanted to be. That big speed. Clear high. Now I guess we just hold the white line, right? You're in first. As long as we get four miles to the gallon, we're good. Well, that said, you definitely do get worse fuel mileage when you're out front. It's a product of not having the slipstream.
going flat out all the way around the track, bricking the throttle. So from this position, as long as we keep it on the white line, it should uh, be pretty solid. thing is that high line you have to get a slipstream to end up making it work. Because if you're just up there by yourself, you don't get the extra speed from running the top because the car can only go so fast with the corners anyways. Outside. Still there, hold your line. Outside is clear. Outside. Stay low, there is a car on the high side. Still there, hold your line. Clear outside. You really need to back up and just time it just perfectly. The car outside. You want to end up passing the leader here. Stay low. Outside, clear. So it's kind of funny, as overpowered as the high line is, the low line is also overpowered. Make sure we keep it low coming out of two. Car outside. So if you drift up a little bit, someone can just Stay low. squeak There's up the inside. On the side. Still there, hold your line. Clear outside if you want it. Outside. Keep low. Outside, clear. Cruising. Just doing our thing, you know. Car outside. Stay low. Checking the fuel mileage. Stay low. There is a car on the high Make sure we're hitting our number. But I'm pretty sure we're good by now. Still <laughs> there, hold your line. Outside, clear. Car outside. Still there, hold your line. Still there, hold your line. Clear high. So much fun, guys. Outside. Keep low. Pull up holding the white line. Clear up top. And by that, I mean I absolutely do not enjoy this. Car outside. Still there. Clear outside if you want to. Car outside. Still there, hold your line. Keep low. Stay low. That was a finish out, but a close one right there. Clear outside. Outside. 
Stay low, there is a car on the high side. Stay low, there is a car on the high side. Cars are trying to give up Still there. there. Clear outside if you want it. Definitely losing the handle here a bit. Outside. Stay low. Still there, hold your line. And bracket just Stay a smidge. Low. Outside, clear. Car outside. Keep low. Still there, hold your line. Still there, hold your line. Still there. Clear. Car outside. Still there. Stay low. Stick baby. Stay low. Still there, hold your line. Ten to go, this time by. Clear outside if you want it. Oddly intense. Keep low. Still there. Go low. The next car's the leader. Still there. Clear. It's one of those scenarios where triple screens would definitely be very helpful. Car outside. Still there, hold your line. Still there. Still so that there, way I know how, how far I can run it out. Especially in turn four. Still there. Clear up top have that little extra knowledge of how close the guy is. Car outside. Still there, hold your line. Still there. Still there. Oh man, getting cramped. Stay low, there is a car on the high side. You are the leader, nice and smooth. Clear high. Yeah, I'll show you, man. I, I know. I'm doing what I can. Like, I literally cannot push the pedal any harder. Outside. Still there, hold your line. Still there. I cannot there, push the pedal any harder than this. The next car's the leader. Still there. We need to nail this here. Outside, clear. Car outside. Stay low. Stay low, there is a car on the high side. Still there. Turn four is definitely our weaker corner. Low. We have a new leader. Five. Five to go. Outside. Clear. Car outside. Keep low. 
Keep low. Keep low. Still there, hold your line. Clear outside if you want it. All right, here comes another one. Car outside. That guy in third Keep place low. is the guy that's actually got me worried the most. Still there, hold your line. Because from third, you can clear actually legitimately get a huge run and clear out on that high side. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. Clear. Although we do have the benefit car outside. of the fact that with the third car back there, Still at least there. it kind of forces this guy to pay attention to his mirrors. Keep low. Caution. Yellow yes! They want you in yes! We got it! You have about five laps of fuel left. You've got two laps to go. We got it. We are going to win this one under yellow. Although I think... <laughs> I think honestly we could have held them off because that low line is just so stupid. Like there's just not nearly enough tire fall off to prevent that from happening. Guys. Yeah, five, hell of a great, uh, hell of a job there, man. Nice job on the comeback there. Uh, six, yes. good running. There's a part of me that wishes you didn't slide up like you did there. <laughs> Get the five ahead of us, but that was fun. Good job, guys. Nice no, job on that. So who else was uh, one six plus twenty on the rate check at the end there? You mean you mean there's a setting other than plus twenty on the weight jacker? <laughs> I think we've had it max out pretty much the whole. Oh, never mind. I forgot. This shit's tight as hell. There is no other setting. Exactly. Real nice work. This is I didn't have the uh, you know what to go that high. So we started off this video by talking about how, you know, we got multi-groove racing and the high line is OP. And then we end the race with just chilling on the low line because it's OP for, what, 20 laps? Something like that. So, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, on one hand, I feel as if what happened there at the end of the race with just holding down on that low line, totally stupid. Should not happen. It should be an issue with the tires, and there's just not enough tire fall off here to make that not happen. But at the same time, when you have fresher tires, like say when you're 10 laps in, something thereabouts, especially if you're further back in the pack, that low line is just absolute junk. Like it's borderline unusable. Because as soon as you go down there, you're sliding up the track. There's just no grip down there. You have to be up top. So it's just kind of weird. Like, I could legitimately make the case for both the high line being ridiculously clear the way to go. But at the same time, in the scenario that we were in at the end of the race here, the low line was obviously the way to go. I mean... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, w let's see here. We started in the middle. We dropped back, essentially, through pit stops. And then we went ahead and moved back forward because of the pit stops. And because of the pit stop, we were in great position to take, take advantage here. So, we you know, wrecked the half the field here and uh, managed to win it. So, anyways. You won. See you in victory line. I think we got to go do some donuts. Oh, by the way, new pace car in iRacing. So, apparently everyone's just going to do a cooldown lap. I I don't know what's going on here. This is very unnatural, and it's kind of got me a little weirded out, as if I'm about to, like, get attacked or something. <laughs> like, guys, the race is over. If the pace car doesn't peel off, I'm staying behind the pace car to see if they just... <laughs> 
just not gonna say anything. See how long this goes for. Just see if they recognize that the race is over and they don't need to keep pace. <laughs> Remember guys, no one wants to pull a Mark Martin. <laughs> It's still going. Hey, what? What is this madness? Come on, pace car. No. I'm. I know this is incredibly boring. Don't get me wrong. Nobody likes watching pace laps, but. I, I am mystified okay, the over. by the fact in. that it took people that long to go ahead and uh, actually pull over. And now they're pulling over as if because the leader has pulled over across the finish line, this race hasn't been over for a full long lap. But uh, also part of the new update, updated uh, smoke effects. And apparently we're, apparently I got my steering wheel pointed the wrong direction. It's been a while since it's been a while since I've uh, done some donuts here. And also, fun fact: I updated my paint scheme. This is the first race I've done with this paint scheme. Apparently, it's good luck. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Roll on the Carnage Report, starring this guy because I'm a moron who can't hold his line down at the bottom. 100% my fault. I will take the blame for it. But, uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Hi, right, bye. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at my replay here of me wrecking the field here. 100% uh, my fault definitely shall remain such. Uh, but I want to go ahead and kind of talk my way through this one here because when I screw up, it's a lot more fun to make fun of myself because I can go ahead and do that than when someone else screws up because then it's kind of you know, verbal harassment and all that stuff. But I will say in the replay, it didn't look nearly as totally like, oh my God, I just basically murdered that guy. <laughs> like, it looks like it almost kind of worked, but... I mean, I guess it's a question of do we hit this guy up here or do we hit him 500 feet further off the track and still push into him because we still would have pushed into him anyways. But, uh, yeah, like I said in the race, I totally failed to account for the three-wide situation, which is absolutely hilariously stupid because I don't know how I didn't really process this. And maybe, like... Joke, uh, I racing, you know, three wide isn't really a thing with multi group racing, but it is now finally. Hey, how nice that we actually have this situation play out. But I'm focusing on this guy over here to my right. You know, he's the car for position. Obviously, I know that the golf guy is in front of me because, like, there's cars in front of me. I'm obviously not the leader. There's cars in front of me. Yeah. So as you go into the corner, you're obviously looking to the left, which is where you're going to be turning. You know, you look where you want to go. You pay attention to what you're trying to do go in the right direction you know and you lose track of these guys over to the right because even though they're still on your screen you know you're still visible you're not really paying attention to them you know even if you're racing on a stupid amount of field of view or you have a triple screen set up like you're not tracking those cars to the same degree as you're tracking your own car or you know the same way that you could track them when you're on straight and they're basically right in front of you so we head on into the corner this guy disappears from my field of view. We're full on looking over in here. You know, this golf guy is obviously up there. Um, and again, we know he's up there because he was in front of us. So obviously he's in front of us. And essentially what ends up happening, we're charging in the corner. We're essentially full on committed to the line that we're on at this point. Because if we want to go ahead and keep it low on corner exit, we need to turn in later. You know, we need to try and apex a little bit later, or alternatively, we just need to slow down. Uh, I think what happened here is the spotter says that there's a car outside, and because of the position that we're in, uh, if I can go back to the cockpit camera, because of the position that we're in, I think what happens is this guy to my right, who is the golf car, he's the guy that I th thought was to our outside, and I didn't realize that no, the guy that was to my outside was still 
this guy at the very top. Because, you know, obviously when you go into the corner, the low line is going to gain a bunch of ground in terms of track position because they're taking a much shorter way around. So getting the clear even on corner entry isn't it it doesn't mean anything because that's just how it works you know your entry speed versus exit speed that's what's playing out so i like i said i think i was thinking this guy was the guy that we were um getting the the car outside message from and that obviously was not the case and from this view it, it obviously looks hilariously stupid because we're nowhere even near that guy at this moment but you know, you just go just a smidge up the road. And, I mean, heck, Spottery could have even said two wide here. But we're just about ready to go three wide. I can't see this guy in the golf car on my screen at all. And, honestly, uh, yeah. I was going to say, even with the triple screen, he might have been in the blind spot from the mirror and the tire. But, yeah, that's that. And at that point, you're full on. Fully committed. <laughs> like you can see, I try and turn the wheel more and lift out the throttle a little bit. Coincidentally, like right at the moment that I realize, oh, like we we we're in a bad spot, very bad spot, and you're not gonna make it from that position with that much speed, that angle in the car, that line through the corner, like not not happening. You're, you're a passenger at that point. You're going to end up running the line that you are. And you can look at it and say, oh, well, maybe this guy in the middle could have been up a little bit higher. You know, like, yeah, shoulda, coulda, woulda. I'm sure he would have liked to have been higher up on the road as well. So that way some of them jack wagon didn't bang into a side pod or, you know, cause him to get into damage with this guy in the yellow car. But, I mean, it was my fault, my failure to control the vehicle. So therefore, my fault, regardless of what anyone else in this situation possibly could have done. That's how it works. Drive your car. And I failed to drive my car properly. And in case you're wondering, people might say, if you're unfamiliar with this, might be like, oh, well, you could have lifted more out of the throttle. Like, duh. Like, why, why didn't you just lift out of the throttle and just, like, suck it up, lose your positions? The reality is, with this car and the way it works... Lifting out the throttle more does not turn the car more. When you get into a, the, the chronic understeer moment, the terminal understeer moment with this thing, the arrow push, simply getting it out of the throttle will not do anything at all. Because you have to remember, these cars are set up to turn to the left. You're getting a lot of your left hand movement from these right side tires, especially from the right rear corner especially on corner exits, you're getting a lot of drive from that right rear corner. So when you go ahead and stop trying to accelerate from this right rear corner, trying to rotate the car to the left, you, you're going to go straight. You know, lifting out of the throttle in a normal scenario, like in road course racing, like pretty much universally is going to cause the car to rotate more. You know, lift off oversteer. That's, that's a thing. Whereas in these cars, in this scenario, lifting out of the throttle is not going to do anything for you. Like, your best bet is to back off to half, quarter throttle, and just cross your fingers. Because that's what you're doing at this point. And anyone who has raced these cars in iRacing will tell you about the uh, dreaded arrow push where it happens and you're just a passenger. Like, simple as that. So anyways, on to the rest of the carnage report. <laughs> 